Now let's look at the next subchapter and dive into the topic of the crystalline solar panels. So each and every crystalline solar panel is made from a silicon material, silicon or SI. And as we saw before, the highest possible energy efficiency, the energy conversion rate you can expect from the crystalline silicon panels is 28%. Um, the reason why crystalline panels are called crystalline is because the silicon is shaped, it's made, it's manufactured into a crystalline structure. It comes in a crystalline structure and there's a the, there's two main groups which are the monocrystalline panels and the polycrystalline panels. So monocrystalline also referred to as mono SI and polycrystalline as poly SI. Now I want to look together with you at both the mono and the polycrystalline panels and I want to make sure that you have sufficient knowledge uh, to understand the difference between the two panels, that you can actually recognize which panel is which one, that you understand the pros and the cons, uh, so that it can help you during your shopping process, right, so that you can avoid uh, being presented with nonsense during uh, sales pitches by uh, brochures or by salespeople. So I just want to make sure that you have sufficient knowledge to understand uh, which choices you're making between the mono and the poly. So the monocrystalline material is formed by taking the silicon, heating it up until it becomes liquid, becomes in a liquid state. Then you take the liquid silicon, you pour it into a mold, you let it slowly cool down. And then as it's cooling down, a monocrystalline structure is being formed inside of the silicon. Now I'll get back to you later on what exactly a monocrystalline structure is. But for now, the... Just remember that the main characteristic of a monocrystalline structure is that it's got a very high purity. And because it's got a very high purity, the overall power output, the electrical performance of a monocrystalline structure is relatively high. Now let me take you to the whiteboard again and let me show you exactly how the monocrystalline is being formed in the, in the manufacturing process. So it starts with a, a simple bath, so some kind of a shape, a mold, something in which you can pour the liquid silicon. So you're taking the silicon which is being heated up and then it's liquid, you're pouring it into the bath, into the shape. And then you start the process by taking what they call a seed crystal. So a very high, high purity and a very small monocrystalline crystal um, that you're placing, that you're submerging into the liquid silicon. So you're, you're taking the seed crystal, and you're lowering it and you're placing it into the liquid silicon. And now the magic starts to happen because as you're slowly cooling down the liquid silicon and the seed crystal is inside of the, the bath. Um, as the silicon is cooling down, it starts to harden up and it starts to form crystals, right? So all the, all the small red dots in the, uh, in the image here, they are all very small um, silicon crystals, very small uh, silicon molecules that are shaped in a very perfect molecular structure and that's forming one large crystal. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go ahead again. So as you're slowly cooling down the silicon, the seed crystal is inside there and it's growing. It's literally growing, right? So slowly it's forming this perfect monocrystalline structure. And the, the end result of this process is that you're getting a um, some kind of a cylindrical shape, right? So it's a very long cylindrical shape. The top and the bottom are a little bit rough, but it's a very nice, perfect monocrystalline silicon uh, bull. We call it a bull. And then we're taking this out of the bath, and it, it's, it's a relatively long structure normally. You're taking this out of the bath. It's a round round cylinder we're taking the and then we're taking the top and the bottom off so then we end up with is a perfect monocrystalline silicon bowl a perfect uh, cylinder and then in order to turn this cylinder into the the solar cells we're taking this cylinder and we're cutting really thin slices of the of this cylinder really really thin slices and you can imagine because it is a cylinder if you take a slice of it you know this this slice will be a a circle right it will be round which is not ideal for building a, a photovoltaic module so you're taking this this circle this very thin slice we call it a wafer is round and then we're cutting the the edges of the 
the circle so that what we what we keep what's left over is an almost perfect square uh, it's almost perfect because you can still see that the the edges are a little bit rounded off this is just an efficiency step because you could try to make it a a perfect square but then you have to cut a lot of material away so it's almost a perfect square but the edges are just uh, rounded off and now we take these monocrystalline uh, squares and we place them in a panel all nice side by side and we are now in the process of constructing our photovoltaic module so now you can see that we started with a silicon material we heated it up we poured it into a shape into a bath we took a seed crystal we placed the seed crystal inside of the bath of liquid silicon then the seed crystal slowly grew due to the silicon cooling down and hardening up then the monocrystalline structure was forming. We turned into a, a cylinder, into the bowl. We cut the top and the bottom off. We slice in very thin slices. We take the cylinder, we cut the edges off, and then the solar cells, we place them into the panel, and we are creating our monocrystalline silicon photovoltaic module. So let's look at an example of a monocrystalline photovoltaic module. And let me show you what I was talking about with the rounded off corners, because uh, it's a pretty good telltale whether or not something is a monocrystalline or polycrystalline panel right so you can see here that the the cells they're not perfectly square you see it right so they're not perfectly square but they've got these these rounded off corners it's not an absolute indicator but it's a very strong indicator that a specific panel or specific module is actually a monocrystalline photovoltaic module so now let's look at the polycrystalline panel and let's see how it's being made and how it differs from the monocrystalline panel. So the manufacturing process is somewhat similar. You're also starting with a silicon, you're heating up the silicon until it becomes liquid, then you're pouring the liquid into a mold, into a shape, into a bath, and you're slowly letting the temperature of the silicon decrease until it forms a, a hard structure. But now instead of a monocrystalline structure, you're forming a polycrystalline structure. So the, the molecules, the crystals are not perfectly aligned and not perfectly organized within the, the solid material, but it's a bit more messy. So one of the key aspects of polycrystalline is that it's less pure than monocrystalline. And the overall output of a polycrystalline panel is also lower than that of a monocrystalline panel. So let's go to the whiteboard and let me explain this in a similar way as we did with the monocrystalline. So we're also starting with a bath, with a shape or with a mold. We're taking the silicon, the liquid silicon, we're pouring it into the, the shape. But now we are not working with a seed crystal. We are not using a seed crystal in the manufacturing and the production process of polycrystalline material. Instead, we're just letting the silicon slowly cool down, and as it's cooling down, it's also hardening. But then instead of this perfect structure, this perfect monocrystalline structure, we're just getting crystals kind of all over the place. They're forming a few crystals there and a few crystals there. And then the result is that um, we are getting a crystal structure, but it's a bit more messy. And this is the polycrystalline structure. And as a result of the difference in the manufacturing process, the final bowl, so the final hard material, the polycrystalline structure, is not a round. So it's not a round cylinder, but it's a square, long shape, right? Uh, which is kind of an advantage for us because you now we can take this this long shape. We're, we're, we're doing the same with the monocrystalline, so we're... Uh, cutting very thin slices, very thin wafers of this, this bull. But now as you're slicing it off, right away it is a square, right? It's not a circle as with the monocrystalline, but it is a square. Uh, so this means that we have to throw less material away because we are basically taking this square and then right away we can take all these individual solar cells and placing them all in the panel. And now we're producing a photovoltaic module with polycrystalline solar cells. Now what I haven't told you before yet is that polycrystalline materials also have somewhat of a, a flaky appearance. You can actually see the different crystal structures, you can see them inside of the material. So it, it looks like, it almost looks like there's different materials glued together, right? So polycrystalline materials often have a somewhat of a flaky appearance and they're also much lighter typically than monocrystalline materials. They have a, somewhat of a, a light blue appearance, whereas monocrystalline materials have somewhat of a, a dark, a very dark blue appearance. Now, and as you can see here, you can see that the, 
the solar cells are perfect squares. It is it's not an absolute fact, but most of the times when you're looking at a photovoltaic module, then you see that the individual cells are perfect squares, then it's often safe to assume that you're looking at a polycrystalline photovoltaic module. So let's take a small sidestep again, and let's look at a, a practical example of a manufacturer that's selling these monocrystalline photovoltaic modules. 